Kiki, we are looking into matters cancer being the cancer month and breast cancer month that is last year last month was a uh, cancer for children and now we're looking to breast cancer i'm speaking to jane francis a lecturer at the jku arts that is jomo kenyatta uh, university of agriculture and technology good evening good evening thank you for coming once again and uh, last time we had a conversation and it was a rushed one mm -hmm. and we needed to get uh, something but today i need us to communicate to someone out there mm -hmm. we need to speak to even the young people because mm -hmm. i made to understand cancer doesn't choose just like covid mm -hmm. didn't choose with who so is cancer and cancer has been here for a while mm -hmm. but now to begin uh, with um i would like us to get to your story mm -hmm. and uh, I would want to know when were you diagnosed with the uh, cancer? Uh, I was diagnosed in uh, 2014 and I was uh, 48 years old. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember when I was diagnosed at the same time, a lady nurse in the hospital was being treated, mm -hmm. had also just uh, were going through the treatment and mm -hmm. she was 24. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine she was half my age and I was 48. Mm -hmm. So just to say that cancer doesn't choose age. that you are old or of course the older you get mm -hmm. the higher the risk factors. Mm -hmm. Actually age mm -hmm. alone is a risk factor mm -hmm. but also young people just like children can get cancer. And at this 2014 what yeah. stage were you? The stage the cancer? of the cancer yes. was discovered at stage 3b. Uh -huh. Quite advanced in fact it was I remember my doctor telling me had you waited for a, a week or two, mm -hmm. it could have gone to stage four, and mm -hmm. there's nothing they could have done for me. Right. So that was very scary. And when you're told there's nothing we can do for you, at this point. so <laughs> you start moving like, you know, adrenaline starts working. Mm -hmm. So I had to move very fast to start the treatment. All right, and at this uh, <coughs> stage, what prompted you to go to the hospital? How were things for you? How was yeah. it detected to be cancer? Uh, because it was the left uh, uh, breast, mm -hmm. so I started scratching, actually almost like two, three years ago. Mm -hmm. You know that itch, you, you have an itch and you want to scratch. Mm -hmm. And every other time it would come, then I would go buy some cream, mm -hmm. I apply, it stops, I would change my blouses from like nylon, to cotton, you know, like when I see a doctor, that's mm -hmm. what they would tell me, mm -hmm. and so forth. But it continued for like two, three years. Mm -hmm. So when it became too much, and then I was a bit busy because I was also in between lecturing, I was doing my PhD studies. Mm -hmm. So I was also a bit busy to concentrate, mm -hmm. to listen to my body. But when I finished my coursework, mm -hmm. you know, you have now to start research. So I had some time mm -hmm. that period as I was now looking for money to start the research. Mm -hmm. I thought now let me take time because also I had an insurance to mm -hmm. do some tests here and there and really check why this continues. And then, of course, once in a while you watch uh, October month because that's when there's a lot of this. Eh? Mm -hmm. and, and you hear somebody was discovered. And my mother started telling me, don't take it lightly. So that scratching mm -hmm. was not normal. Mm -hmm. And finally, I went and did several tests, ultrasound, chest scan, and so forth. And then finally, an ultrasound was uh, found the tumor under. Mm -hmm. the left breast it was quite hidden right. and in fact i think was it not for somebody who knew me very well a classmate who is a radiotherapist i may not even have discovered it because she really took a lot of time on it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now uh, as as a human we have a problem with receiving the message the mm -hmm. acceptance you have been told you have cancer mm -hmm. how do you did you react at that point and mm -hmm. how did you get out of the shock if any mm -hmm. Luckily for me, uh, I, I had a good doctor mm -hmm. uh, that relayed the information in a good way, mm -hmm. uh, despite the fact that um, it came in bits and pieces. But again, also because they were trying to, to confirm, mm -hmm. you know, uh, because uh, you, you need to do a different tests. Eh? Even mm -hmm. after they see the tumor, mm -hmm. they still want to do uh, what they call a first test, an FNA, mm -hmm. final, final needle assessment. Mm -hmm. and then they they act and it's painful so they did it twice and they want to be sure for two things one is it really cancer mm -hmm. and if so actually not two uh, three is it really cancer if so which stage and then mm -hmm. which type because there are different types of cancer right so like now me they told me i'm triple negative other people are hormonal positive and so forth and negative so all these things uh, took time from april until june that's when I really knew 
this is the type of cancer I have, this is the stage. Mm -hmm. And now the doctor who finally uh, did the biopsy and read for me the results mm -hmm. said, unfortunately, it's quite advanced. And I think also doing the FNA several times mm -hmm. uh, made the breast not look very nice. So I was told to start immediately with chemotherapy, not surgery. Wow. Yeah. And uh, this chemo, many people speak of the chemo. Mm -hmm. They do not mm -hmm. know what happens in the chemo. Mm -hmm. What does it take? Um, Mm -hmm. Actually, what is chemo mm -hmm. for someone who always hears mm -hmm. about chemotherapy? Okay, uh, I would speak from a layman's language, mm -hmm. what for me I understood because I asked now, of course, even me when I was told, now you have cancer and these are your three forms of treatment. Mm -hmm. I wanted to understand what, what is this, mm -hmm. what is chemo, because you know, I, when, when it's not you, you never even think about it. Even people listening to me there, mm -hmm. unless they know somebody who has cancer, they mm -hmm. may not even bother with it. Exactly. So until now it touches you, then you want to know. So mm -hmm. chemotherapy, from me, what I understood is, yes, a, a medication, but it is like poisonous mm -hmm. to the cancer cells oh, okay. so that they die, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, it's a very strong uh, chemical treatment, mm -hmm. but in liquid form because it used to be put in the vein. Right. And there are like three, uh, there were three different protocols. So I, I used to see water fast is put, then mm -hmm. some red um, uh, 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 medication, mm -hmm. and then again some more water, and then another type. So there are different types mm -hmm. given because it takes a whole four hours. Even in between, you are given a meal, tea, or lunch mm -hmm. because it also weakens you. Because being a poison aimed at killing cancer cell, science mm -hmm. has not been able to, uh, to have a chemo that kills only the cancer cells mm -hmm. and leaves the good ones. Mm -hmm. So everything is killed and that's why people fear. Because when all your cells are killed, I remember I, I did it on a Friday mm -hmm. and by Monday I had lost 7 kgs. Because my body was not used to this strong substance in my body. Okay. So I was puking, I was losing nausea, everything, you know. Mm -hmm. So when you are throwing up and you are not eating and you are not drinking, mm -hmm. then it can take you down. Sure. So the secret mm -hmm. to survive chemo mm -hmm. is to eat very well and to do a lot of juicing. You eat a lot of um, fruit juice and you prepare a lot of uh, vegetable juices mm -hmm. and then also OG and so forth, you know, mm -hmm. because then that way you replenish, mm -hmm. you remove like uh, the, the dead cells and then you get back your new uh, good cells. Uh, uh, John, you'll agree with me mm -hmm. in every situation in life, we mm -hmm. always need a support system. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to cancer, we'll always look for someone to lean on, especially mm -hmm. when it comes now to the chemos, you feel you're weak, like you have lost everything, or the news mm -hmm. that you have received. Mm -hmm. Now, at the point you got diagnosed, you have begun your chemo, mm -hmm. how was your support, support system? Mm -hmm. Uh, it was quite tough, let me say, at the beginning, because first I didn't even know whether I wanted to tell people or not. Mm -hmm. So I'm there like and I'm struggling on my own. Mm -hmm. I remember as I told you I'm a lecturer and you know Jua Walimu Wana Pesa Mingi. Teachers they say it's a noble profession but the lowest paid. Mm -hmm. uh, so I remember my when I was told I have to start chemo Una Sabiwa an amount that comes to almost three million mm -hmm. and that time the salary in your bank is a hundred because we shall have to kila kitu. Mm -hmm. So I remember my my last salary, July hundred 90,000 was for the chemo, and the other one was for consultation and a few tests. And the second one, but you see as you go on and you don't have the money, it becomes difficult. Mm -hmm. And the moment you start the treatment, most of the time you can't work. Mm -hmm. Because as I said, it takes you down physically. Right. So it's very difficult to do your normal work. And in my case, because it was uh, very advanced, it was stage 3B, the doctor told me I needed to take um, five years leave of absence from... Mm -hmm especially the PhD studies mm -hmm. and the lecturing. Otherwise, it will, because I am triple negative, mm -hmm. triple negative means it's a rare type of cancer. Less than 10% of women have it in the world. Mm -hmm. They don't know the cause. So they were like, if this chemo doesn't work mm -hmm. for you, we are not sure what else. Mm -hmm. So they really told me you have to take uh, to concentrate. So my support system first was the family. Mm -hmm. I remember I had to close my house and go home. Mm -hmm. uh, my mother is the one who took care of me. Uh, and uh, then she passed on two years later, mm -hmm. also to some form of liver cancer. Mm -hmm. But uh, my siblings, because I'm the firstborn, they were there. Sometimes this one would take me to hospital and so forth. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And when the financial burden be started becoming uh, heavier, mm -hmm. at some point we had to do what the first president recommended, do Harambe. Mm -hmm. Thank God, uh, family, cousins, and classmates. So literally somebody told me, just go to your phone, whoever is there, just send a message. Mm -hmm. You have this fundraising and let's see how many will come out for you. Mm -hmm. So it's the time actually to know you are your friends. Mm -hmm. And I'm grateful to everybody who has been there for me mm -hmm. uh, since then, because it's been a long journey actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not just treatment here, but also outside the country. You, you yeah. just you just <coughs> mentioned something that I feel it's quite important here. Mm -hmm. uh, at, the, uh, at the time you, you got cancer, you were around 40 plus years. Yes. And now you went back to your mother mm -hmm. and she took good care of you. Yeah. And we have a, a group of young people mm -hmm. here who mm -hmm. don't regard their parents yes. because they feel like uh, when they to grow, they Imagine. want to be who they are. They start mm -hmm. disrespecting their parents or becoming something else. Yes. And look at you, you went to your mom mm. and she took good care of you. Yeah. That's a good lesson to learn. It's true. Now, at this point, mm -hmm. people are taking good care of you. Mm. Were there any other uh, programs that maybe you were enrolled that en enabled you through your treatment? Yes, uh, you also mentioned the support uh, system. So other than now, that one of uh, help to do the treatment, mm -hmm. the financial part of it, the psychological part, mm -hmm. and also to understand more this cancer and especially this triple negative, I came to meet other people in the hospital mm -hmm. during the treatment. Mm -hmm. And so they introduced me to support groups like Faraja, uh, which is at based at Tempisha Hospital, mm -hmm. and uh, Faraja was also started by uh, one of our uh, survivors, a breast cancer survivor, and it has different programs to help you first to accept mm -hmm. their talks every month mm -hmm. for breast, there's another week for cervical cancer. So there are talks organized uh, to help us understand. Mm -hmm. uh, there is yoga, there is meditation, there is exercises. And because when they removed my breast, my hand was also swelling. Mm -hmm. So there is also uh, lymphatic drainage. So mm -hmm. I would go for that. And then there is also Africa Cancer Foundation, which is founded by um, uh, Mrs. Dorothy Nyongo and the husband, you know, uh, mm -hmm. they are in the sis, uh, this so she was also there for me actually mm -hmm. she gave me a lot of materials to read I actually didn't know what and now I can explain to you it's chemo or radiotherapy mm -hmm. so I remember in fact my first picture on mm -hmm. treatment mm -hmm. uh, Mrs. Dorothy Nyongo is the one who came to take me in Aga Khan and I did treasure that uh, picture mm -hmm. because it started this journey so from those support uh, two main support groups that I came across uh, at the Aga Khan Hospital itself, mm -hmm. we also had our own support group, Aga Khan Hospital support group, where now you would meet other patients mm -hmm. who have, are going through the treatment or who have finished. Mm -hmm. So like our chair lady that time, she had finished, unfortunately she also passed on, uh, it came back, eh, recurred. Mm -hmm. But at least uh, I must say that every month that we would have the support group and I would listen to her and all those people who have survived, that really encouraged me. Mm -hmm. And I've actually gone ahead and helped to form many other support group, mm -hmm. uh, even National Cancer Survivors Association, mm -hmm. my own cancer information support network via which now from that same time I could go to the media and mm -hmm. because I also understood when some people are told they have cancer mm -hmm. other than fear of dying and so forth, there's also that like it's stigma, I shouldn't speak about it. Mm -hmm. I didn't go out there to look for cancer. Exactly. It just came, and nobody looks for it. Even the children mm -hmm. who are born and they have leukemia at maybe stage uh, one month or two, they don't look, of, it's a disease like any other. All right, I want you to hold on yeah. that thought. We, we take a very short break. Yes. Uh, you catch your breath. Okay. Uh, and uh, um, all right. We'll be taking that short break in a while, but before then, mm -hmm. uh, let's l talk about the stigmatization mm -hmm. because it is one of the biggest problems people have been facing. Mm -hmm. You are afraid of uh, speaking out of your problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right, now we can be taking that uh, break. Mm -hmm. Then when we come back, we talk okay. about the stigmatization mm -hmm. and how you overcame it. And most people who fear to go to hospitals is because they are afraid of uh, stigmatization. Even in, during this COVID-19, people have been afraid of going to hospitals or getting to be known they have COVID-19 mm -hmm. due to fear of stigmatization. We take a very mm -hmm. short break and when we come back we talk about that. Keep it right to high four. Why 254? 
imagine. Thank you for keeping us the company. This is OI254 Health Wednesday. Today we are talking about breast cancer. I'm speaking to Wang Jin Francis, lecturer at JQ Art, and she's very comfortable speaking about cancer because many people out there are afraid of speaking of it, and especially to the fact that they may be stigmatized, and that's the point we are in. Right now we want to talk about stigmatization and how to fight it. Now, Jane, mm -hmm. stigmatization crops into almost every issue in life mm -hmm. and people have their own myth or notion how they feel or how they start judging you mm -hmm. for the kind of disease and uh, they do not know like nini mm -hmm. but for you if you were stigmatized how did you find for a fight uh, through the process okay um let me say personally i, I didn't <laughs> feel any stigma uh, within myself uh for some reason, maybe also you know when you are at least a, level, a certain level of education, uh, mm -hmm. you can read also and, and understand what are the causes, what are the risk factor of this disease. Mm -hmm. And then my grandmother had cancer, mm -hmm. so I, I had that experience. My father also had just passed on to cancer. So I, I knew, even though I didn't know what it entailed, mm -hmm. uh, I didn't even know exactly how much the expenses would be. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do know now that quite a number of people feel... Uh, stigmatized because I think it's because they know, for example, first they become a burden to people because it's very expensive mm -hmm. and now you don't have enough money to go through. So mm -hmm. you want to keep quiet about it. Mm -hmm. And most likely, uh, if let's say, for example, you're in the village, so mm -hmm. you feel like you may have to sell this and leave your children with mm -hmm. nothing, you mm -hmm. see, and then you'll still go. That's the challenge I think most people prefer to, to hide. Mm -hmm. Other people, um, mm -hmm. maybe just because you see cancer takes a toll on your body. Mm -hmm. So you've been having a very good body, good, you know, you look very well. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, your body just goes down, mm -hmm. you know. Like, for example, I think even the, like, you know, people um, who have HIV, most times will never see about it. Mm -hmm. Or, for example, cervical cancer. Uh, but uh, any type of cancer can take a toll on you physically. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, nobody want, you don't want to be in the open. Mm -hmm. you, you want people to know that different person, not this one that they know. Mm -hmm. So I think those are some of the main challenges that people fear stigma. Uh, but personally, okay, the only stigma that maybe I felt could be that, you see, one of the risk factors they say uh, for cancer is uh, obesity. Maybe you are big. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I say, well... So I used to think, is that why I've got cancer? Mm. But then as I said, even like my first interview with Victoria Rubadiri on NTV, there was a 24-year-old girl. She was half my age and she was half my size. So did she get cancer because of the size, years of the size or what? Mm -hmm. So cancer, the risk factors for cancer uh, can be now uh, also a cause for stigma. So you feel like that. Uh, but for me, it's not really necessary. And I don't bother about it. I prefer to be like this than to be. 20 mm. kilograms mm. <laughs> so okay. after chemo. Now, another thing that can be, you see, they say lifestyle diseases mm -hmm. brought by smoking, too much drinking, alcohol, and all that, you see. Yeah, those, yeah. They say they put it as one of the lifestyle diseases. So the stigma will also come because it shows that maybe you are not able to do away with some of this. Uh, the discipline of life. Of <laughs> course. And that's why now, that's where now the stigma will come. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Mm. Finally, 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 mm. my directors mm. on me, time is up. Mm. You, through your treatment, mm. you found other ways of, uh, mm. uh, I would say, complementing the treatment mm. from uh, cancer. And I see you have mm. uh, uh, supplements here. Mm. Uh, like one example, I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, Baobab. That's baobab powder, mm -hmm. yeah, and you use it in your when you are doing your uji. Uh -huh. That's artemisia. Uh -huh. Artemisia is used to shrink cancer cells, fight malaria, and so forth. Uh -huh. Yeah, and you know that one is also being used even in Madagascar, Tanzania to fight COVID. Right. So the artemisia. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's hibiscus. You just take it as a drink. Uh -huh. Yeah, to is an antioxidant. That's chia seeds. Mm -hmm. And also they have a lot of calcium mm -hmm. for your body. So you just put it in your water, mm -hmm. it grows. And it's also very good for the gut system. Mm -hmm. 
right. cleansing the gut system. So when you're using yeah. these supplements, they will yes. not interfere with the normal medication mm, from the no, hospital? No, because these are just na natural seeds mm -hmm. and natural fruits and natural vegetables as much as those. Mm -hmm. And why I have to do use them a lot is also because the type of cancer I have, mm -hmm. triple negative, does, is, they don't know the cause is not hormone-based. Mm -hmm. The others, 90% of women get a tablet right. for their life, like five years, ten years or more. Mm -hmm. to stop the cancer from growing. So me, I don't have that. So I have to go All right. natural. This is your camera. I understand yes. you have a project going on. Yes. Uh, please uh, give us your final recommendations and okay. your message to the women out there okay. and even to the men okay. uh, because there is also cancer for men. Mm -hmm. uh, briefly, yes. your final recommendations. Okay. So I'd like to encourage uh, people, especially women and even uh, men, to go for a screening because this October, the Breast Cancer Month, many hospitals are giving discounts. Some are even doing screening for free. So I encourage you to go for screening. And on 24th of October, uh, we are going also to have a day to celebrate uh, survivorship, a Thanksgiving day, and we'll have doctors who will come to speak to us at the St. Paul's Chapel. We encourage you to, to, to come and be with us if you have a cancer patient and she doesn't know uh, how to help herself or himself. So please, please do come and support us. We have a pay bill number, 514422. Uh, whatever you can uh, donate, we can be able to use for uh, to support our patients who are very down and also to 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 spend uh, at that event. In a particular way, I wish to express my gratitude to Hillary and his team. They've been uh, very good for us. And I'm sure he'll also share our people number on his social media pages. Can I give right. my number? 0722 369 If you have a patient, and she or he needs psychosocial support. God has uh, blessed me and I'm always there for you. So feel free to call me on 0722 369 389. And those others who would like to support us with food, non-perishable foods, companies out there, uh, whichever group that has unga, uji, uh, rice and so forth, please do give us because COVID-19 has also taken a toll on many of our patients. And a good diet will also go a long way to boost their immunity and help them uh, overcome any challenges that can uh, make cancer uh, be a bigger challenge to them. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Jane, for coming and trying to demystify uh, this problem that has been in the society and back home. Thank you so much for keeping us a company. She has been my guest, Jane Francis, a lecturer, JKU Art, and my name is Adereva Hillary. I was sitting in for Patricia Murioki. Have yourself a very good night. See you again next week. Good night. <laughs>